We're, we have to tape everything up and secure it, but uh, it's a work in progress here. Again, we just moved in, so it looks like the stream should be coming back online. Stream will crash for a moment. Just refresh. It is only a blip on the radar. Okay, so hopefully you guys will understand when this happens that I'm coming back. But either way, we're back inside the game. So, to finish introducing Arch, we have Ohio on the solo mid shadow feed. Up against Silencer, which can be a tough matchup. Is that uh, not really the best matchup for Silencer, but a very annoying here to lane against in general in the 1v1 situation. KYXY jungling as the Enigma. They're abandoning the offlane. Extinct playing the Rubik. Net going to be handling the Keeper of the Light. We have Mushi on the PL. So they have this really powerful tri lane, but no one really punished with it. What they can do, though, is just stack the camps with Rubik, kill them with Illuminate spam, uh, and Enigma can get a lot of farm. So Arj is going for a very greedy... Uh, kind of lineup and Moss is not doing anything to punish it. They're going for pretty much abandoning their lanes as well So on the side of Moss uh, Malaysian all-stars. We have LOD playing the darks here in the mid lane We have FYZ on the silencer um, Towards the bottom lane. We have Venomancer playing the support uh, Or Castillo playing the support Venomancer ADTR on the Sand King with the smoke of deceit picked up They have a pretty potent roaming duo and one thing that they can do is look to punish the Shadow Fiend. Currently, he's solo mid. He does have uh, some Observer Wards. Uh, or no, sorry, that's a Radiant Observer Ward. He doesn't actually have any vision towards the side of the map. So they really could go for a Smoke Gank. And in fact, there's been several heroes off the map. I imagine after this final pull, really nice pulling for Moss, actually. They're denying tons of experience. Uh, unfortunately, there's nobody there to actually take it, but they're keeping the creep away back in the tower, ensuring that Enigma won't come into the lane. So we have Anti-Mage, free farming in exchange for PLs free farm. And as well as the Enigma being traded for a Darkseer. Both of them are similarly efficient at jungling. Enigma is a bit better, but Darkseer can catch up later on, especially when stacks start coming into play. He can clear the stacks faster than the Enigma at the later level. So right now, I would give definitely the edge to Orange, but it's not an overwhelming Dyer's advantage. Moss has a attack. pretty strong mid game, and the one thing they really have going for them is that Ohio is not having a good time mid at all. He's currently 2-3. and three. He hasn't got his bottle yet. He went for double salve as well as a set of tangos, which is what you have to do is get a lot of regen against Silencer because the constant spam uh, of Glaives as well as Last Word. He hasn't actually taken any points in Curse of the Silent. Uh, oftentimes the combo of Curse of the Silent and Last Word can be particularly devastating, uh, but in this in this particular case, Shadowfane has so many low mana cost nukes that it's not really that effective, but just going for the Glaives, they're going to have that secondary source of DPS one thing Moss is lacking in though, as we look at their lineup, is, t is stuns. They really don't have much. They have Burrow Strike from a support, four position Sand King, and Vacuum. That's pretty much it. I suppose you can get the mini stun on Anti-Mage's ultimate, but uh, that's not Denied. really much to work with. So in the, in the larger scale engagements, with Rubik being able to steal potentially Burrow Strike, as well as having Black Hole uh, and Telekinesis Lift, aren't just going to have a lot more lockdown. They have ability to take down Anti-Mage. If you start with that Telekinesis, you can follow up with Black Hole, you can raise him into the submission, and even though Shadowfiend's having a slow start, this is a comeback here. Shadowfiend can easily farm the stack jungle camps with the help of Keeper of the Light, so shutting down the Shadowfiend is really not enough. It's going to come down to if the Anti-Mage can outsplit push the PL significantly enough to limit his map control. Mushi is getting free farm, he's out farming the Anti-Mage currently, which is not good news. This is an empty lane. Anti-Mage has the better attack animation. A little bit easier to farm with than PL, I would say, in terms of last hitting, but he doesn't have a Quelling Blade. And honestly, to me, this is a mistake. The Quelling Blade, yeah, sure, it's an empty lane, you shouldn't need it, but it just ensures that you're human, you're gonna have that slight margin of error, you're less likely to make any mistakes. They can go out and mid. Nice Burrow Strike to start, the Gale to follow. Here comes the Nuke from Silencer. That's gonna do a lot of damage when the Raze is thrown out, and indeed it is. So a nice kill. This is the one weak point right now. Is that Shadow Fiend mid? Sure, you can shut him down as far as farm goes in the lane, but he'll come back later. What you really need to do is kill him, get that first blood, get the golden experience, because you're giving away a lot. You're giving away a free farm jungle enigma. You're fighting against a lineup that has more team fight than you. There's the better scaling support, uh, certainly than the Venomancer, if you look at that Rubik. Even Keeper of the Lane. The problem for Moss is how do you push into this lineup? They don't have a great pushing lineup. The one thing they could do is once Anti-Mage gets farmed is he can just kill the Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light, normally what you'll do is just what Ned is right now. You park yourself behind the tower. Whenever they try to push, you illuminate the wave down. But Anti-Mage can just blink on you and pick you off once he has his basic items up. He's not there yet, but maybe in 5-10 minutes they can start to exploit that. 
LOD hits level 4, rotates towards the top lane. And is going to be starting to get some experience. Pressuring that peel, he really couldn't do much in lane. Uh, and the issue is, sure, you've got Surge to be able to run away. They don't have a ton of chain stun, but with Illuminate following up from the lift and the, the nuke from PL, they can bring you so low that you'll pretty much not have enough HP to stay in lane. So it was better to start off in the jungle. That was definitely the right choice. Sure, you can try and limit the PL's farm a little bit, but that's going to come at a big trade-off because the Enigma is getting absolute free farm in the jungle. He's already level 7. KYXY, six minutes in, hits level 7, is going to come and start helping Ohio. I'd like to see Ohio start farming those jungle camps. They haven't been stacking them for him, at least. Let's see if they do it later on. Shadow can kind of stack them himself. If he walks towards this camp around, say, like, uh, I don't know, the 635 mark, he leaves the lane, he can stack that big camp himself and then kill it with some raise spam. But the ideal thing is for the supports to do it so he can sit in lane as long as possible. And having Shadow Fiend mid at this point in the game, you really want to have the supports protecting him. That's what they're doing now. Everyone's scouting out each other, but nothing, no real engagement yet. Anti image just rushing that battle for has gone back for the pulling blade finally to ensure he doesn't miss any more last hits. He's only three behind Mushi, pretty much dead even. Mushi now dealing with the iron shell harass, super annoying. And now the dark seer has a soul ring and a little bit more in terms of levels. He can jungle, he can beat on the radiant side, he can pull this big camp and deny some farm to Mushi. So Mushi's not going to get as much as AM. At least he should. It. And Net now in trouble on the bottom lane. Trying for some shenanigans. He does have a TP, but there's no chance to TP out in time. He'll fall. Another kill going the way of Moss. So they are picking up kills here and there. As far as gold goes, they're leading by, uh, or they're only behind by 500, rather. They're behind by 1,000 experience. And that is all the enigma right there. So just the constant, efficient jungling of KYXY. Level 7 at 6 minutes. He has slowed down quite a bit. The support's a bit under level, but they want to make something happen bottom. They do have that black hole. They'd love to kill off the anti-mage because he's rushing that battle period, but he gets Burrow Strike to start. Can he get off a good black hole? There's the silencer ultimate. Nice reactions here. The ult from the anti-mage. Not the best on a full uh, page or basically full mana enigma. Doesn't really do anything, but they might build a muscle down KWX. Wait, no, they want the idol onto the back line. Just tearing through him. Three heroes and the ultimate from the silencer for naught. And you see the weakness of that sensor. Sure, it's a great, powerful global ultimate, but it doesn't when you fight. Moss is just lacking in stuns. They're lacking in that burst damage. And that's what you want against a highly leveled Enigma. You want to burst him down during that initial burrow strike. And when that fight fails, Ohio has space in the middle lane. Mushi has more space in the top lane, or at least uh, doesn't have to worry about anyone ganking him. Sure, he's still being harassed by Darks here, but he doesn't have to be afraid of, say, a smoke gank from the Sand King. Uh, the Venomancer with some dusts. Instead, well, they are going to smoke gank, but they're heading mid. They're not heading after Mushi. They want to keep the Shadow Fiend down. I am dying, though. That really sets him back. He was he was on a pretty good track to get his battle fear. I think around like the 12-minute mark or so. Especially because he was rushing it naked. Maybe even 11 and a half minutes if he last hit perfectly. But that death will slow it down a bit. Mushi almost dying to the Iron Shell. Well, he can't be happy. What's on the way for him? Drums? Radiant Pretty standard, really. Are fortified. So, against this lane, you almost want the soul ring just for the extra HP regen, and you can spam at the darks here and be a bit of a nuisance. But Mushi's going for an item that will suit him more in those mid-game five-man Dota type clashes. The wraparound comes. Orange is not looking fully prepared. They don't have black hole this time. This is a great time to engage if you're Moss. Rubik has stolen something. It's Mono Void. That's not the best spell to steal. The Burrow Strike, they really want to hit on two. He's trying to line up the two hero Burrow Strike. Not able to do so. It uh, looks like they're just going to settle for the Keeper of the Light. So four heroes bottom. They're going to get two. Double kill for the Silencer of all heroes. No Talisman now up. Up to 1300 gold. Will he be the one to build the mech? Or will it be the Darkseer? Looks like Darkseer is going to go for that. So we'll probably see the Silencer go for something like a Force Staff. Uh, the... Oh, what's the name of that item? Oh, why am I forgetting it? The Rod, Rod of Atos is actually not bad on him either. Dyer's the one thing... They do lack stun, so I wouldn't mind seeing something like a Yule Scepter, perhaps. But uh, especially that Rod of Atos, because it just makes you very tanky. You can lift through a lot of the initial burst damage, and it's a pretty good ganking tool. Silencer does lack natural CC, so that's something they can use to help get in range. Uh, as sort of an initiation Radiant's to set up the follow-up stun from the, from the Sand King and look to get some kills. But either way, he's farming well. He goes for the treads. Let's see what he goes for next. So for anybody just tuning in, you are watching the GST Dota 2 GMPGL Malaysia Qualifier. The winner of this entire qualifier will move into the main event where there will be much stiffer competition. 
And I, I want to point out, it looks like Kachik Imba is no longer playing for Moss. He was playing for them earlier. I actually kind of want to check right now if this is him. Uh, but he was a, he of course is the six man. Oh no, it is still Kachik Imba. So how did I miss that storyline, man? That that's just the six a.m. in the morning talking for you. But Kachik Imba, of course, the the six man, sort of the up and comer for Moss is. Uh, actually playing against his his trainer Mushi in a sense. Let's see how he can do. Some good practice for him. Mushi in trouble. The Gale's gonna whiff. They needed that Gale to hit. They don't have an Ion Shell on the Sand King either. The coordination just not quite there. The TPN from Silence they've committed so much to this kill. They must secure it. They will do so with the damage from Last War being crocked uh, when the duration of that initial debuff expires. Now if you're getting closer and closer for the anti-mage. A death for Mushi, not the biggest deal though. He's not he's not rushing a Radiance, he's not the sole carry in his team. Sure, Ohio hasn't had a good, had a good start. Ohio wants this tower. Will be at the cost of his life though. He gets caught by the burst strike, pops in a cloud of souls and pain. And down will go. Moss really making their mark in this game. They're still behind on exper uh, on gold. They're catching up in experience. They really need to find some good engagements and keep the pressure up in the mid game because come late game. It's definitely going to be advantage orange. They have the better team fight composition. They've got the stronger scaling late game supports, and their carry, the Phantom Lancer, is definitely going to outmatch an anti mage, assuming relatively equal farm. I am rushing the battle fury. Can look to out farm him. He has not going for the burning build, leveling up the mana break and the spell shield in an empty lane. Spell shield is somewhat understandable, but really I think Burning Bill would have been better here. Uh oh, Anti Mage could fall here. The Illuminate and the final Malthus tick will bring him down. That's a big kill, and they're finding it cheaply. They didn't have to black hole either. Mech up on the Enigma has been for a little bit now. And with this early mech, they can start to push very aggressively. While they push bottom lane, space is created top for the Phantom Lancer. I'm sure, Darkseer can sit here in Iron Shell, but he's not going to solo kill that PL unless Mushi really makes a blunder. And so far, Mushi died once, but. It came at great cost getting that kill. Tower falls Radiance bottom. bottom tower Would like to see fallen. some aggressive wards by Extinct. He doesn't have any in his inventory right now. Net has a sentry. Add a smoke. Monovoid's still up on this Rubik. Really not a useful spell in most cases. Could be useful later on against a hero like Silencer, but Silencer normally has quite a bit of mana. His spells are not that expensive aside from Global Silence. And even that. Uh, or actually, I think they reduced the mana cost on this recently. Dyer's oh no, sorry, let's look at the duration. Yeah, it's quite expensive, but even so, it's only like a third of his mana pool. Here comes the Sand Cave running into the Eidolons. Do they want to take this fight right now? They don't have a blink up on Sand Cave. There's a mech on Enigma. I don't think this is a good engagement, but let's see. They don't have any follow-up stunts. They, do they have the Curse of the Silent or the Silencer? Oh, there you go. He just TP's out though, and the lack of stuns. Enigma just laughs his way to the bank. Once with the global silence being down, now they could definitely group up and start to push if they want. But they also have a great split push in lineup, so really either option is available to them. They could even think about Roche having an Enigma. Enigma can solo Roche at this Radiance point in the game. Top tower I would honestly like to see top. Orange force an engagement there right now. But instead it looks like they're preoccupied top getting this tier 1. There's nothing that Moss can do to contest this Roche. Without the global silence, what do they have? Sand King's not going to walk in and burrow strike. You can Maleficent him, you can lift him, you can mono leak him, you can black hole him, and there's just no way to fight against that. So without Global Silence, Moss just doesn't have team fight. It's a level 9 Darks here, doesn't have two points of the wall yet, doesn't have his mech complete, although it's coming soon, and doesn't have a max vacuum. So Moss really can't take the 5v5 clash, which is why I would like to see Orange go for the rush. Let's see if they do it soon. For the moment, they're content to keep the pressure up on the anti-mage. Was that blink stolen? It was, and that is going to be a very sad anti-mage. He's not maxing blink first. If you rush the battle for you, you really should max the blink. You really should get some points and stats instead of leveling up your spell shield. Because spell shield is quite cost effective in terms of skill points at just level 1. It does scale reasonably well, but the stats are going to be more versatile. They're good. They skip, they combo well with the spell shield if, you want, if you're up against physical damage, which they are between the PL, the Eidolons, and the the Shadow Fiend, and they're also quite good uh, in combination with the Spell Shield against magic damage. So, uh, And of course they help you farm faster too with the additional agility and plus damage. So not really the ideal build for me, but he should have the Battle Fury fairly soon. The problem is that Mushi almost has his Diffusal 
And PL is actually a scary five man here with just a defusal and drums. This AM can't do anything except split push. That's the name of the game for Moss right now. They can't take fights unless they get an amazing global silence and AM is fat enough to burst heroes down. Maybe if they have a blink epi, but that's a long way off. So realistically, all they can do right now is go for the split push. If they try to clash directly, they're going to get absolutely destroyed as long as Orange is decent positioning. But how do you split push? You're, you've already lost your outer towers. There's aggressive wards in every single lane around the map. It's so nice to be able to draw on the map again. All of a sudden, Ohio back on top of the farm charts. And it's exactly what we often see with Shadow Fiend. Is you can shut him down early, but you have to keep that hero down. You have to mount the pressure. Don't allow him space to farm. But Ohio took the punishment, but it was at a great trade overall. Burrow Strike in. Unfortunately, the Illuminate will clip ADTR, and Burrow Strike was just stolen by Extinct. He loves to steal that. And Burrow Strike's in on the LOD. The Razors fly forth. Ohio's hasted. Race Car SM. One more auto attack. All of a sudden, a wild triple kill for Ohio Shadow Feet appears. And Moss is in disarray. They started this game 7 to 3. It's now 8 to 7. Aren't showing that they had a game plan they were where they were fully prepared to sacrifice their Shadow Feet. And it wasn't for Mushi. They didn't Radiant's sacrifice the Shadow Fiend for Mushi. They sacrificed it for the Enigma, Radiant's for the really early mech. For the quick level 7. And boy, has it paid in dividend. Paid, the, paid off in spades. I mean, attack. the dividends from this are absolutely enormous. Anti-Mage does have his Battle Fury. Blink is not maxed, though. This does slow your farm rate Radiant's by quite a bit. If you look at how Blink scales, attack. you lose 7 seconds of duration from level 1 to level 4. It scales really freaking well. So his farm will be slower. Not so much in the lanes, but moving from camp to camp in the jungle. Radiant's this does make a difference, especially once you get more items. And now Nat's just going to park himself bottom, confident that these lane wards placed all over the map are going to see any sort of rotation. He can keep the pressure bottom while they go for Roche, which is what they're currently doing now. It will be a very easy rush at that. Uncontested. I really think they could have done this earlier, but... I mean, they've definitely got the trades. Mushi is manning up against Anti-Mage. There's the Mana Void. Mushi is underestimated his damage. Oh, didn't have the Diffusal Blade. That's why. It hasn't gotten it delivered yet. The Courier was busy going to the Roche Pit to deliver something else. Uh, oh, the Blink Dagger from the Enigma. Nope, that's just in the stash. Oh, I think it's the BKB from Ohio. Oh, Mushi's probably not happy about that. <laughs> if I were Mushi, I'd be a little upset. Because you know they're not going to contest that Roche, but... If he had that Diffusal Blade, the AM definitely dies there. Not just because of the, the Mana Burn or the uh, potential additional damage from the Illusions. Uh, actually, he had a few, so the definite additional damage, but also the Purge. Here comes the Sand King. He surged in. Surge, Burst Strike can be a potent combo. But again, how do they take a fight? They need like a 3 4 hero Burst Strike because there's just nothing else to follow up after that. Yikes. Now Mushi does have his Diffusal Blade. AM cannot man-fight him anymore. AM cannot split-push very easily because there's constant pressure on his other lanes and he cannot out-push this orange light-up. And also, with the with all the core items, the BKB up on the Shadow Fiend, the Blink mech on the Enigma, the Rubik having, you know, just all the basics and a lot of levels and Burrow Strike stolen, uh, it is wearing out soon, but he still has it for a little bit. They can pressure. They can pressure mid with three or four heroes while PL pressures top, and Moss can't really punish that. They lack the stuns to do so. Even if they go and try and gank the PL, realistically PL can just wait for the Burrow Strike and then TP out. Uh, if the vacuum's there, you can outweigh that because the burst damage is lacking. They're actually going to just preemptively black hole AM. This is not looking like a good engage for Ma, uh, for Orange. That was some sloppy miscommunication. Meanwhile, Mushi may die on the top lane. What is going on with Orange here? Epicenter channel as well. Global Silence flies forth just to ensure the kill. You're no peer of the Although I really don't think they needed it. He was well under tower Radiant's reach. He wasn't moving anywhere. Is Between Venomous Gale and Epicenter, that is just basically you, you're you walking in quicksand at that point. Yikes. So Orange, some really questionable engagements there. No idea what was going on with that Enigma Black Hole. There was just nobody in range to back him up. Just the Illuminate, which was widely off the mark as well. I mean, it's, the thought process makes sense. You want to kill the AM because he's the only way that Moss has to push the lane out and prevent you from 5 many mid. What doesn't make sense is going for the AM in that situation where you clearly have... Oh my goodness, are you kidding me, Extinct? 
Steals global silence. Well, now they really can't take a fight. Global silence stolen, as well as having black hole. Uh, I think he'll still, yeah, he should still have it for a little bit uh, after that black hole cools down. Even with just global silence, global silence will ruin this Moss team. They need, they need Burrow Strike Epicenter to take a fight. Anti Mage needs to be able to blink away. All he can do is frantically try to split push mid lane the Burrow Strike to initiate. Mistake still sitting on that global silence has chosen the stall on anything yet. Oh, they might be able to get rid of it. There's the mech. The Eidolons as well, they don't have the black hole. If they had it now, anti Mage would be dead. He might be dead anyway. He gets zapped. Wall thinking about a blink away. The raises are sufficient. Ohio is showing Mushi how to play the Shadow Fiend while Mushi just farms away. Uh, as now join the fight mid. They can look to force the high ground advantage here. If he can steal Burrow Strike, they'll have all the disables they need. Very difficult as a Sand King to protect that Burrow Strike. And, you know, one of the weaknesses of Silencer is you can send him in. He's really more of a lane dominator than he is a uh, reliable. Oh, Extinct just waiting for the Burrow Strike. It's like he's got a, a homing missile. <laughs> oh boy, he gets four staff to safety. FYZ, Malefus on him. Burrow Strike on three by Extinct. Where's the follow up? There's the Illuminate. They Burrow Strike into it. That could be a mistake. In comes Ohio. Can't find the raises. Wow, Extinct. I mean, that was a little greedy. That was a little cocky. They didn't have Mushi. He'd rotate the top. But just hitting that three hero Burrow Strike like a boss. Mushi is going to get the tier two top. And all anti mage can do is try to farm up this this Yasha. It should really be on Radiance agility traits. Just a small thing you can do to push a little bit faster. More attack speed, more damage. But realistically, he's not going to be able to outpush this Arc squad at this point. They just had to dominate their lanes, and they weren't able to do it sufficiently. They couldn't punish the jungle enigma. They didn't really shut down anything too much, aside from the one kill in Ohio. But uh, you remember the other kill that happened where they used Global Silence just for that kill, and it's a very long cooldown spell. Darkseer takes a lot longer to really contribute the way Enigma does. Darkseer comes into his own around like the 25 minute mark. Enigma starts to hit his stride a lot earlier, like 12 to 15 minutes. And Arch knew that, that, that this game all about that Enigma timing. You know, you, you can look at Mushi and see that he's getting a lot of farm now. Uh, that Ohio was shut down early, but it's caught up nicely. And it's certainly true. But the key Radiant's to this game was that putting the emphasis on getting that Enigma a good start. And then once they had the core items, then they force the fights. And now Moss is basically in a position where, you know, how do you win the game at this point? Mushi's not even going to try for the tower tonight. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Maybe a little bit of lag or something there. Perhaps worried about getting Mana Bird. He doesn't have a Soul Ring. He does have 13 Wand Charges though. I think he could have gone for the deny, but chooses not to in the end. What I would like to see our anti-mage do is maybe try and backstep the creeps mid just to prevent them from having creeps to push onto the high ground. But that's only stalling the inevitable Radiant's because Mushi's gonna pressure top. You can't attack. counter push all of these lanes at once. I'm actually counter push is something that Moss is very lacking on. Four staff in onto extinct. That was a Ferrari four staff there initiating the enemy hero into your team, but no follow up. Cute attempt though. I mean, they're really, you gotta give Moss credit. They're trying every little thing the cheek Imba just not finding the space that he needs. There we go with the Malphys to start. Silencer will just absolutely melt. An army, an army of wards will slow down this push, but wards are not really the... They're a good anti-pushing skill in the mid-game, but they're not enough against a team like this. You need a lot more than those wards because they don't really hit that hard on heroes that have so much armor. Looking at the Shadow Fiend with 11 armor, Mushi with 18, and having Eidolons, they could just ignore them and attack the tower. Tower's most likely gonna fall here. Oh, Burrow Strike in. Catches out two. Burrow Strike stolen yet again by Extinct, but he is silenced currently. He can't get it off. Here comes Ohio. Head full of steam. One Teledy. Deep. <clears throat> Won't be able to get him just yet. Now chasing the Venomancer. Ion Shell Creep may be enough to bring him down. I heard a Rubik Burrow Strike. No, that's actually a Sankey Burrow Strike. Stink still has it though. They still have black hole. They don't have mana for it actually. Soul Rain's cooling down. Silencer on the way out. Meanwhile, anti mage Kuchikin, but pushing for all he's worth. Stink could look to Burrow Strike here. Not going to yet. Here comes the TP from AM. Mana Void, not enough. Will fall. 
did not check Extinct's mana and do the math for something you really have to do as an anti-mid player. He's kind of forcing the issue. You can cheek Enmo showing a little bit of an experience. And here comes the black hole. Catches four and an instant GG. RG Sports with one black hole. And what was probably going to be their game anyway with a bit of style. The punctuation mark on this affair. Kachik Emba, no match for the full might of Orange's five other five players. Well, that's one way to end a Dota game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Glad we ended on this game and not on the uh, 1000 ping disconnect affair. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's coverage of the GEST Dota 2 Qualifier, uh, hosted by uh, Dota Talk, of course, brought to you by Beyond the Summit. Uh, this is the GMP, GMP GL Malaysia Qualifier. The winner of this qualifier, which, well, you got to figure Orange are the heavy attack. favorites for that, not just in this qualifier, but in all of SEA, uh, will be moving on to the GST Dota 2 main event. But they haven't done it yet. They've got some more teams to beat. Only one team can advance to that main event from Malaysia. Who will it be? We will find out tomorrow. That wraps it up, at least for our coverage on this stream. Uh, there may be some other games going on in other streams, but I think we're pretty much done across the board for today's action. But more action awaits tomorrow. Good manners from Moss. I love to see it. <laughs> Very cute stuff. But guys, thanks all for tuning in. We'll have more coverage of Southeast Asian Dota, possibly some Star Ladder as well. For you guys available tomorrow but for today we're wrapping it up thank you all for tuning in thank you all for your support of southeast asian dota we love to see you guys turn out like this even for sort of these lesser known teams uh of course referring to moss not to orange but i'm gonna go sleep i have to see a i have a very special appointment tomorrow a, a date you might say uh, it starts at 2 p.m so thank you all for tuning in guys we'll see you tomorrow when more gmpgl Malaysian qualifier action will continue. I'm LD. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy my casting, be sure to follow me at twitter.com slash LDDota. All right, that's it. LD signing off.